hello and welcome to the foster if you're watching on youtube or the spotify video you see i'm coming at you from the nighttime tonight we got a nighttime vibe going right now and that's mainly because i've been procrastinating on editing this episode all day but i do not want to keep you from it any further this is such a special episode it really made me realize i don't talk to men that often like other than men in my family or my boyfriend so it was really insightful to see what is going on with the state of men specifically black men at this time today's guest is brenton jamar he's a multi-hyphenate creative he's an author he's the founder of a community event called black boy joy fest which is all about normalizing black joy and it's a space for black men and black boys to come together which i think is just so special and so 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 needed i found out about brenton through our editor on the podcast tatiana and I'm so happy that she introduced us to him, honestly. This conversation was so special to me, and I really don't want to keep you from it any further. So here is my conversation with Brenton Jamar. Today, we have a very exciting guest. I am just so excited to have you here. Brenton Jamar, how are you doing today? I'm so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Angel. I'm, I'm so excited. excited. I have to shout, shout Tatiana out, Tatiana Berry, our editor for the podcast. She introduced you to me, and I'm just so excited to bring this message to our community. I do want to say you have the honor of being really our first male guest outside of my boyfriend. Like, I have my boyfriend on, but yeah, normally we have women on, so I'm really excited to expand the podcast a bit. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. And and again, I'm honored. What's up, ladies? How y'all doing? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, maybe men listen to. I actually don't know, but I feel like it, we're, it's mostly women. Like when I look at the oh, analytics or oh, non-binaries. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody. All right. So I like to start each episode off with asking, "What is your story?" Uh, what is my story? So the story that I've been telling most recent is I remember looking up in the sky one day as a kid, right. Um, and I remember seeing a plane like fly across and I thought to myself as a kid, wow, you'll never be that important to fly. And um, that kind of like sparked my uh, like story as a creative and as a young black boy. Um, I never really thought that I was that important or that valuable until I became older. Right. And so like as I began to um, grow in my craft and. Uh, as I began to kind of like understand who I was and who I wanted to be as a black man, I, I, I often refer back to that little boy and how like how um, I want to continue to nurture him. Right. And how I want to continue to like feed him and, and remind him that he's important. And so that fuels a lot of what I do. Um, and like and that's a lot of my story is like I'm a little black boy at heart, a creative black boy at heart. And not like, and I move in that. I try to be as honest and genuine, as authentic in that as I as I possibly can. Oh my gosh, I relate to that so deeply. Yeah, I feel like protecting that inner child is the most most important work I feel like we can do. And it's so interesting, like how my inner child shows up for me, like randomly. I'll just I don't know what your what's what's your sign? Gemini. Oh, your gym? Did you already have your birthday, or is it coming yeah, it up? Passed. It was uh, last Sunday. Yeah. Oh, happy belated birthday! Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's definitely big Gemini energy. Big. Yes. Big, big Gemini season over here. You know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I yeah. I feel like I find my inner child showing up in the most random spaces. I think when I suppress her, that is like when she. It's like, I am here to be seen. I'm all the big feelings. Like I, I was crying about something randomly the other day and mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, like I just need to be present with this feeling right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's so important, especially because we don't see, I don't see at least many men acknowledging, you know, their inner black boy. Like it's like, I feel like even from a young age it's kind of taught to you like to be a man. And so to even acknowledge like that, you have that black boy inside of you. It's just so special. Yeah, it still feels very weird, to be honest with you, because I certain people will correct me. They're like, black men. I'm like, no, I 
you know, before I speak to the, before the black man comes out, you know, I need to speak to that little black boy first. So that way that little black boy can be healed and be the best black man that you going to, that you better hope that you're going to get. You know what I mean? Like, um, and so it's like, and I've had so many people correct me and I have to correct them back and like explain to them why I say this or why I post things the way that I do. Um, and it's because of that. You got to like take care of that. I love that. How does that show up for you on a day to day basis? Like, what does that practice look like? So like in my personal life, um, that means honoring like what I feel over everyone else's perception. I just actually learned that, like I was looking in the mirror, I got like a hotel, I went out of town, I did career day. And so I re- I was making all these plans and I realized the plans like revolved around everyone else. Like I was gonna have a cookout. I'm like, why are you doing that? You doing all the cooking? Like, why are you going here? And like, you know, like that's not how you wanna move. That's not who, who how you wanna be. And so I had to, like look myself in the mirror and say, Hey, like good work so far, but like, there's another, another level of commitment to yourself that has to happen here. And that means like honoring how you feel over how you're perceived. Um, that means, that means, uh, being okay with, um, how sensitive you are as a man. Like I had somebody say to me, you know, like, um, I generally don't do well with sensitive people. And I'm like, that's fine. You do get to choose and I'm all about choices. So like I am heavy. I like have a lot of feelings. And when I am bothered, I am going to voice that I'm not an unbothered person. I'm very bothered. And when I am (laughs) very bothered all the time. And, and, but as long as, um, uh, we've created a space for each other's inner child to kind of play freely and love freely and like, have disagreements freely then like i'm okay with that so i say i guess i say that to say like that means just like honoring like myself and my feelings um that means being okay with what i need Um, and that is very very soft space i'm hard on myself already so like my that means like curating spaces and allowing people into my space that that are soft and that allow me to be soft. Oh my gosh, this is so pertinent. Me and my boyfriend have been like really engaging in a lot of conversation around this and yeah. I'm just like ready to play him as already. <laughs> like it's yeah, 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 yeah. I find that like when people say like, I'm not good with dealing with sensitive people, it's often that like, they're not okay with sens- like sitting with their own sensitivities. And so they're like, I-, I can't make space for myself. Like how could I make space for you? And I'm like you like, cool. Like I totally get it. You need to do your own work. I'm still working on myself. Like we don't necessarily need to be in community. Wish you all the love, wish you all the best, but yeah. you And you come off like very self-aware. I'm wondering like how, like how did you get to this space? It's so funny because the first thing that came to my mind is like, I never really got the chance to be a child. A lot of black men and a lot of black young kids in general are in survival mode and scarcity and so when you're when you are always unsafe whether it be emotionally unsafe physically unsafe it makes you grow up really really fast it makes you pay attention to things um in a much different capacity and so i think really that's where it came from is like and not to shade like my upbringing at all like i'm i'm good uh, <laughs> um, but like there have been moments and I'm sure a lot of black men and a lot of, like I said, just people of color in general can relate to of like when you are in a, um, a scarcity mindset or like, or in survival mode, like you tend to kind of just grow up a little faster, you pay attention to things. And, um, um, as a kid, I remember being able to like, just feel the room you know what i mean uh and just kind of feel the energy from all from all sides and so it made me take record right like of how i feel but also like kind of take record to 
like if I'm feeling this heavy, like I wonder kind of like what other people are feeling, you know? Um, and so not only being aware of like how I feel, but also how how my actions make others feel. Yeah, because it is directly related to your safety, I'm sure. It is. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love for you to speak more about your upbringing and what it was like, because I relate to you so deeply on like growing up really fast. So it was my mom, um, it, it, like an amazing Black woman. I'm the age now. I'm 32. I'm, at this age, she had two kids. She had a one-year-old, and I have a brother that's 10 years older than me, from my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and so by this time, she had an 11-year-old and a one-year-old. And so, I, and so I say that to say, like, I could only imagine what that's like, being like 32 and kids and you're a single parent like I can barely like I see you got plants back there I can like barely like tend to them the way that they need to you get what I'm saying no literally this was just gifted to me and I was like are you sure you want to give me this plant because I don't know <laughs> it's like I'm struggling to make it to work on time so I can know literally what it's like what it was like for her and so I like very much grew up in that arena uh where um my mom worked very hard to keep it together but also um like be the second ver you know a, another new version of me of her of mom that she wasn't did that she didn't get to be for my brother right and so I, I say that to say very fortunate in the things that she taught me and the and the things that she exposed me to my father wasn't around so it made me really miss out on a lot of value and like that I could have received as a man my grandfather did great um and he stepped in and was that provider that I that I needed and even still to this day need. Um and it's and it was that. It was like uh, me um a lot of times like being a confidant for my mom, right? Like I don't necessarily know I did get to be a kid and so many great experiences, but um, there was an aspect of that that was kind of like tough, right? Um, and like even still, sometimes like strains the relationship because I'm like, look, like I'm not your friend. Uh, like uh, I'm not your friend. We're not cool. <laughs> like um, I know that's how those dynamics of relationships be sometimes, but like um, a, a lot of it was that. Um, a lot of it was also uh, her trying to protect me too. Um, I oftentimes think about like, if anybody's familiar with like Bible story, like the story of Moses and his mom, like when Moses was born, his mom put him in a basket and sent him up the ro- like the Nile River because she knew that like he couldn't be like she couldn't take care of him like because they were killing little boys back then like they were like if they wasn't that they were like doing whatever like so she and she couldn't so she sent him up the the, the river and uh, and I relate that story to a lot like mine where my mom tried to like send me to college like try to like she's like you know don't talk like this mm-hmm. uh, like respectability you know, politics exactly like. You know, you need to learn how you need to like speak like this, walk like this, talk like this. Um, and it subconsciously almost made me feel like it was a disadvantage being a black boy. So I, so I really grew up like always like having feeling like and I just got over this recently is that I and I would like I definitely feel like I'm very authentic. But there was a performance piece to that. Oh, too. yeah. Where it was like, I it's like, I know I could shift this. And so I like, well, perf- like, and do that. And so a lot of, I say that to also say like a lot of my upbringing was that too. Like a lot of like, I can make this better by just like, be, like with a smile or um, I could, you know, I could just make things better. I could just um, respond well, like keep my emotions in, keep my feelings in. Be very stoic. Uh, yeah. be, w- be whatever you need me to be. Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's making sense, like that's, oh no, totally. Like that's that's what it was. But again, not taking away at all from the fact that one, I could have never done that. 
<laughs> you know, and like raising no kids, but also too, like just out of respect for my mother, like I'll always be like, that was, that was heroic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I think I'm 26 now. I think at this age, my mom had three kids. And so oh, wow. it's just like, I, I, I can barely book a dentist appointment, you know, like I could not imagine. Exactly. Birthing three little babies. Exactly. Insane. It's quite yeah. insane. But yeah, I, and I relate to you so deeply on the performance aspect of it all. And I don't know if you were like a high achieving student in school, like mm-hmm. gifted program, all of that, like that was me. And then I moved away. Mm-hmm. And coming back home has been like really intense for me because when you move away, you don't have to put on the performance, you can be your authentic self. And then being forced back into that performance, it is like jarring almost. Um, and so it's been like a real uh, conflict, mm-hmm, I think, mm-hmm. showing my family my authentic self. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, do I want to live authentically or do I want to please people? And I think I'm choosing to step more into my authenticity. And it's hard. It's so hard. I would love to just be praised and like, <laughs> I definitely just love, you know, the admiration. Yeah. But it's like, if I want people to be in real community with me and show mm-hmm. me real love, then I have to show them my full self. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we also have to like normalize it for ourselves too, right? Like I'm realizing that if if I don't step in that authenticity, like I never make space for myself to fully be the v- best version of myself, right? Like Exactly. I just kind of like cap out at where I am and I'm, and I'm never going to be okay. Off of, off of like, off of the sake of your feelings. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like, love myself too much. too much. And I'm also me. I was just talking to my boy the other day. We're like, and we're way too, I'm way too nosy to not see how my life turns out. Like, you know, like I gotta see like what happens, how it turns out. You know what I mean? Like I gotta see the end result of this jump. So it's like, if it all like, I'd be damned if it's gonna all fall on me. Like, nah, I'm I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try my best to do what I can do to like show up the best way I know how. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. I'd like to transition a little bit into the Black Boy Joy Fest. Yeah. Um, because I feel like community building and creating space is just so pertinent. And as someone who just like moved away and like trying to find community and like trying to make friends in adulthood, I found it very challenging. And so I wanted to know how you came to that and what has that been like creating that space for Black men and Black boys? So a little bit of backstory. I was a youth director at a church oh wow ministry i never tell i never really tell that story because you know millennials we hate church like like really like just that's a whole nother conversation it's very disgusting out here um (laughs) and so and so i generally leave that part of the story out but now i'm i'm grateful that i had that experience i worked at a church i was a youth director as you get to know my brain, you'll find out that my faith is a large part of who I am. Um, I am like most millennials where it's like, I'll be like, I'm more into spirituality than religion. It's like, well, obviously, right? Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working at a church. Like, I watched the church go through like a huge divide. Um, It was a bad and keep in mind like i'm working with the kids and so like my job is much different from a lot so i'm like away from a lot of the politics and um like the church just goes through an extreme divide like all of it like um i feel super unsafe with the kids like coming to church so i like stopped doing programming and i'm like just showing up at games anyway like they did an organizational restructure and like started the church all over got rid of all the staff it was nothing that I did, thankfully. Um, but like they got rid of everyone. Um, I took my vacation. Mm-hmm. I pulled some money out of my 403B and I moved to Mexico for a month and some change. I love that. 
and I'm and I stayed in Playa del Carmen in Mexico for a month. And over that time, I had like I like suffered really, really bad depression. I got like super skinny, like I wasn't eating, like I was just throwing like I was the I had lost my community. Um that's like when you work in a in an environment like that, it's kind of like you eat, breathe, sleep that. And so like that's what that's what was happening. And so I was on this hunt to kind of like reincarnate myself and figure out who I was, right? Like who like who I was when it came to my faith. Like, do you even believe like in this? Like, let's recheck some of these boxes and like see who you are in these instances. I had kind of established myself as like a content coach, right? Um, and I was like teaching these people how to make content and all these crazy things. Um, and I just didn't feel like, I just didn't feel passionate about that again, right? Like, um, there, like I was just at a, at a pivot in my life where like everything had fell down and I like w- was just under like, it was just like the worst depression episode I had. Ever. How old were you at this time? Um, I had to be like twenty nine, okay. like twenty nine, maybe thirty. Yeah, I was. I had to be like twenty nine, like, and I had a depression episode. Like they come like every three years, where they, well, you just be out for like four five months, right? Mm-hmm. And. Um, this, this particular one, I was out for 10 months. I did, I was without a job for 10 months. Oh my gosh. Um, and in that time I was freelancing. And in that time I made the decision. I was like, what do you care about? Who are you? Yeah. Like, who are you? And in that moment, I was like, you know, I care about choosing to be the best version of myself I could be. And in that moment where I didn't have anything, like I didn't know where I was going, I all I did know was that I just I wanted to choose to make the rest of my life the best days of my life because we will have these moments in our life where you um like are just so distraught about the mistakes that you've made like w- like you have to now dismantle this vision of yourself that you believe that you would be. You have to unlearn so many things and relearn so many things, not to mention like some of the things that you learned while you were in survival mode. Yeah. Right. Um, and now like shedding that skin. The bottom line was that I just, I wanted to make a, I knew that I needed to be the type of person to recommit to myself every single day. And I did that. And in my journey to do that and in me learning to love myself, I also realized that there was a little boy inside of me that was very, very hurt. I also was going to therapy during this time as well because I had some like, I'm not sure if you um familiar with HSA, like a health savings account. And so like, I had taken my, I had emptied out my health savings account because my job was going to get rid of it. And so I had paid up for like 12 sessions of therapy, like in that time with my health savings account. So I didn't get rid of the money. So I was going to therapy during this time as well. And I realized that I was very, very hurt still, but I had done so much work on my own, but I also realized that I had so much work to do on like that little boy inside of me. Um, and how I like had this whole like who I was was who I was, but it really it was really wasn't fully who I was. And I needed to dig into that. And as I d- dug into that, I, I began to love the journey that I was on to becoming the best version of the black man that I was. I realized that I was missing out on my dad and what it looked like to kind of discover what masculinity looked like for me, what manhood looked like for me. Um, And it was a journey of me falling in love with myself again. And so essentially that's where Black Boy Joy Fest came along, where it was like, you know, I'm on this quest to normalize Black Boy Joy. And then I'm also a Black boy who who, who's like, like I'm in a group chat telling my homies about it too. Like, yo, y'all gotta you gotta know about this. Like, if you don't know something about black men, black men, like you are talked about in the group chat. Okay. Like <laughs> it's talked about in the group chat. Like we talking about it. Um, and so 
I naturally wanted to share what I was doing with my friends, whether it, I was starting to do yoga, right? I was starting to like um, get my like feet done, normal things, right? Like um, I was starting to um, go get like massages. I was going to therapy. It started with really me sharing that I was going to therapy and what my experiences were like. And as I did that, I thought of Black Boy Joy Fest. That was in October of last year. In November, Black Ambition, if you're familiar, they have um, a pitch competition that they did. Pharrell brought Mighty Dream and Black Ambition to Norfolk, where I'm from here in Virginia. They had a pitch competition. Over hundreds of people, I made it to the top seven. Oh my gosh. Um, and I pitched the idea of Black Boy Joy Fest. I won $500. I met Felicia Hatcher, who... Um, I, f- I forget her title, but she is like, she's the CEO right now. She's the, she, she is, yeah, she, she's, she's currently moving things forward with Black Ambition, but I end up meeting her. Like I met so many people on the Black Ambition team and like, um, and just, and got so many resources and like have been invited into so many rooms. And now Black Boy Joy Fest is kind of like this little movement, like within the city. And now like I'm doing yoga classes and collaborating with people on like panels and like wellness discussions. And it's like kind of just turned into this huge thing um, that I didn't expect it to turn into. I love that so much. It's really inspirational what can happen when you go on your own healing journey and get curious about yourself and how really that's not even for us. A lot of the times it's, it's like we need to move through ourselves so we can help our communities and really be that light. Yeah. That's just so inspirational. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah I Like, yeah, no, it, it's crazy how, how it was birthed. I always tell people like, um, black boy joy fest. It isn't, um, it isn't just, um, like joy. Right. But it's also like, being present with every emotion as a black man, right? And um and, and being fully present with those things and like choosing them, but right after that still choosing joy. Um and so I'm really amazed at like what it's become. And um but like I raise money each month for like a yoga class that I do. That you teach or so I don't teach it, but so what I do is I end up contracting a yoga instructor out, um, and then I'll generally do an exercise at the end of the class that are that's geared to like a like a little activity that's geared towards black men. Um, and I do all of the recruiting, so I know exactly who's in the room. Like I'm sending the message directly to people, um, and just kind of curating the space. Um, I thought about getting my. Um, <laughs> Like my teacher certificate, but I was like, nah. I ain't yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Doing that, like, I would much rather just like curate the space and like rally up the guys and like, yeah. you know, do it that way. How has this been received? Because I just know like a few months ago, and it's annoying now, but Jonathan Majors like really sparked this conversation around masculinity. And it was, I feel like it had people divided. Um, and mostly between men, at least from what I was seeing online, maybe not what you were seeing, but it seemed like a lot of people were accepting of what he was presenting and challenging these ideas. But then on the same spectrum, like people were like, kind of not for it. And so I'm just wondering how this has been received and even your approach to masculinity today. So one of the things that I've always had a problem with is Black Brotherhood not being showcased the way that I see it or the way that we see it, right? Like, you know what Black Boy Joy is, being a Black woman, right? Like, because you you have been around Black men, and, and I'm not sure what your experiences are like, but, like, there is this... Um, there's this joy and there's this thing that a lot of other cultures don't get to experience. Um, and that, that, that joy and that, that like that light that we have, it's not showcased in media either. Uh, and so that was very, very unusual and abrupt because we do live in a culture that black masculinity is not, uh, viewed like that black masculinity is like, 
is how hard you are as a man, right? Like black masculinity is like how athletic you are. Black masculinity is how big or how handsome and how big your beard is, right? Like that is black masculinity. We've never seen two black men hug in bright colors that are heterosexual men because black masculinity is not viewed in that way. Now, whether you, you know, whatever, like your sexual orientation is like, you can't, you can't take away from the fact that like when black men to get together, there is this love and there is this connection there and a safety and a, and a like a overarching like net that can't nobody really get in. Like you can't take away from that. And I felt like that's what that show. Um, well, I'm speaking of two different things. I'm speaking of Jonathan Majors when he uh, when he posed with Michael B. Jordan. I don't know if you remember that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was what was, got the internet up in arms. That one. But in the one with him in the pink, like, yeah, like, I'm cool with it. Like, black masculinity is generally shown in those mediums that I shared before. It's never really shown in in this capacity, right, of black men being able to be artistic, be masculine, but also be artsy, like in a medium. Um, and and like, sorry for the people that didn't get it. Like, shout out to the people who did. Uh, yeah. And 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 I also felt like it was very uneducated and uncultured people who were like, what what what's happening? It's kind of like, yeah, you you are part of the problem. Yeah, well, I think it's just so limiting when we don't allow for that kind of love and care to come through. Like, if it's like, like you're saying, like in spaces where cameras aren't around, like it exists, but why is it when it's photographed, then it's like, it's a problem. Or even like, I remember seeing this picture of a dad kissing his son and that got the internet up in a roar. And it's like- crazy. Why is it that we don't feel comfortable showing these things or why is, or even in, engaging with this? It is because I think it's viewed as weak largely by our community. And I think it's hurting us so greatly because if I was a little black boy and I could never, you know, get a kiss from my dad because he would feel weak, I'm just like, that is weird. It's weirdo behavior. <laughs> like it is like why are you, why is that immediately where our mind goes to? You know, like I think we really need to get curious about that and investigate and look in the look in the mirror and just be like, maybe I need a kiss from my dad, you know, like maybe that will provide some healing to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just because things have been done a certain way doesn't mean that is how we need to continue. Yeah, I clearly have a lot of feelings about it. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely agree. I um, had the conversation, and, and what does that look like for us, right, um, is, is part of the conversation, too, is that also means being authentic and having hard conversations when we don't necessarily always feel like explaining it, right? Like, even my, and, and I've seen, like, the effects of, like, generationally, like, I, I, watched how my mom has talked to me right but but i'm also now watching how my grandparents have talked to her um and these things are being passed down from generation to generation and so what i'm learning is like there's some healing that we have to do on the back end but also some preventative maintenance that we need to be prepared to do like actively to save our culture and in our generation from like more years of like detriment um my grandfather, he was like pushing me to do something. And I was like, I actually don't need you to push me to do something else in this moment. I actually just need you to say that I'm proud of you, which you've never told me, by the way. Mm. What, how was his response to that? He just was looking crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, you haven't. <laughs> like, no, you haven't. Um, and, and so that means like being very now I, I have to care more about my feelings than your perception of me because I know my feelings, like my intent is to op- is is to have a huge heart. My intent is to like is to is to heal me so I can be the best version of myself for this world. Um and if you get that, like you will get it. If you don't, like I am sorry. I am willing to let you go. Um and and being authentic about that in, in all in all relationships. 
I love that so much and relate so, so deeply. I guess, cause I, <laughs> I'm realizing now I don't talk to many men outside of my boyfriend. And so I'm, I know you're saying like in the group chat, like you and your friends talk. And so I'm like, how are you in the men in your community talking about these ideas? Is it like a, are you even like, how, or does it just kind of show up in like how you interact with each other? Both. So, okay. so I kind of like predicted it like a while ago, right? Like when I started this journey, because I was also doing like consulting with businesses on like community building and creating content. And so like, I noticed that like, there was a lot of space for women and but there wasn't a lot of space for men and i knew that it would begin to become trendy like all things do right and and i just felt that in my spirit i'm like like we are at the cusp of it it's going up right now and we're still we still aren't at the peak like we're still but we're, we're higher to the peak but it's kind of one of those things where like men talking about their feelings it's more so black men right and men in general those things are being talked about more so is it easier than what it was before? Absolutely. Is it still very, very hard to have discussions with Black men or just, um, yes, because Black men, like, we don't have accountability. Um, no. <laughs> I'm like, we don't got accountability. Like, we are almost always the leaders in our community. And so if there's this, like, uh, barrier of protection where we've had to be under so much scrutiny all the time that it's almost like you can't tell us nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, le and, and then when you are telling us that like our feelings are hurt that you've broken our egos, you know what I mean? Um, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna be quiet, but I get <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a few minutes. Well, the reason I'm, I'm nodding is because for me being a black woman, it's like, if I hurt a man's ego, like that could be directly linked to my safety. Yes. And I could be put in a very unsafe situation and have been. And so that's what I'm just like immediately, immediately nodding. You know, and, and that's unfortunate. Like, unfortunately, like that is that is what it has been. And and even on down to like certain men in my life where I'm like, don't embarrass me. I say it jokingly and I'm like, but no, I'm dead serious. Like you look like me. Like, and I look like you. Like you embarrass you em like you embarrassing us, but I've even on to myself, I notice no accountability and, the, and, 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 and really what accountability looks like to us is someone yelling at us all the time. Because most of us were raised by our mothers, right. Or like very hard parents that tried to like make sure we didn't go down the route. So like discipline to us and accountability to us looked like, we are going to get yelled at if we make a mistake or we are going to get um, like we are not we if we don't perform here, there are consequences to that. And so we grow up feeling like people telling us something wrong is a direct hit to sometimes maybe our safety, our well-being, like it makes us feel unsafe because when we were used to having those conversations or somebody telling us we're doing something wrong, it automatically resulted in a spanking, someone yelling and telling you to be quiet. It resulted in you having to shut down and not share any any emotions, right? Um, it like resulted in so, so many things. And so like, we're still learning to like, as while we are simultaneously teaching people how to receive us, we're still learning how to receive ourselves. Um, and, and so it's hard to like have that accountability and have men that are strong enough to like stand up to you. And like me and my friends were tight, but like, I like, they know I'm the one in the group. I'm always like, I'm, I feel bad because I feel like, I'm perceived as like the woman of the group because I always, and no disrespect to anyone, like, and keep in mind, this is just me telling you about my group chat and the dynamics, but it's like, I am um, almost perceived as the feminine one because I always am like, got a problem with something. I'm always speaking up about something. And in retrospect, I'm like, I don't want to feel that way where it's like, we just have more that we have to get to. Um, and so I, I guess I say that to say it's, it's, it's showing up in our conversations um, and we're talking about it, um, but it's hard for 
for them to teach me as I'm receiving and me to teach them and everybody to learn and be okay with learning and be okay with like your brother telling you like you wrong and you got to be okay with fighting and making up and uh, being honest and not holding back. Um, it's hard to like, a lot of people aren't willing to be a part of your tribe as you figure what that looks like for you um, as a black man. And so a lot of black men aren't willing to like go that route. You this know? is so real. I And I never, I actually never really stopped to think about this before because I see like say a black man does something really bad or any man really. Um, I'm seeing it even with James Franco. And it's like immediately that person is just like ousted. And there is no conversation about what they did. They're just on the outskirts. Like, or even Jonathan Majors, for example, like his accusations. Mm -hmm. It's like, I i don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it just seems like immediately you're just put into this box mm -hmm. and we just don't mess with you. But there is no like real accountability or there is no like, hey, this is the conversation to have. And I never thought about that too. I'm just thinking of like conversations with my um, boyfriend where I'll say something and the response to me will seem very big. And I'm just like, hey, what is going on here? But I didn't think about the fact that like being raised by like a black woman and you. With there not being any accountability now, but still like thinking of it from that same way that you did as a child. Um, how that would warrant, you know, a big reaction. And even it's a lot of the times. Like, yeah. Even what you were saying too earlier about like how hard you are on yourself. I feel like that is a way that a lot of black men um, try to create accountability for themselves is that they turn that violence onto themselves and chastise themselves and are just really mean. And I think the more we can just allow that grace and be kinder to ourselves and soften, the mm -hmm. more healing we can just find. This is all just so um, illuminating for me right now, personally. Yeah, no, good. No, and I, I, that's why I try to live my life the way that I do in the spaces that I do, because if we don't, that will never, that will never really like get us on the path that we want to go as like as humanity, right? Um, and that's what we're trying to do as people, right, is see the humanity in each other. And I've actually realized that, like, Black women and Black men are saying the same things a lot of the time. They're saying the same exact things. Um, and I've also even realized that, like, um, I understand why there's this huge reaction to us, like, messing up because... Black women are all like, are like, I'm tired of having to be you. I'm tired of having to like create this space for you to vibrate up here and you like not meet in the mark. And so there's like this vibe, like there's this like this this undertone of disappointment, right? Like, um, that I think like you know people are experiencing too by us, where like where black men have to understand like, yo, like be honest and being like, one, you don't gotta be nothing you don't gotta, you don't wanna be. <laughs> like you apologize and you are genuine and you are honest and like, and you get to, to that frees up so much space for you to like heal and to like live freely, right? Uh, and that's really what I want for all black men. Um, is to create a space for them, whatever it looks like, um, and to not live in this vessel, um, but to like actively like step out of that and and be jovial and be authentic. The internet only gets the good parts of me, right? Because that's what I know how to record. <laughs> like, that's what I'm showing, the good parts. But everybody who knows me, they're going to tell you, like, just as much as he is funny and on the internet acting crazy, like, he got to, like, he is sensitive. He is crying about everything. He is upset about everything. Like, he is, you know what I mean? Like, he, just as much as you see joy, he has, like, all of those other feelings. And so, like, take it as you will. And 
And I think like black men got to understand that they get to be all those things. Yeah. Um, my sister told me one time and I'll never forget it. She was like, you're, you are dynamic, you know? And there, and I was like, it was just that one sentence. And it was like, cause to me as, as black men, you have to be one thing. When you aren't that one thing, you're invaluable. Uh, uh, it could be just whatever you you think it should be, like whether it be in your education, whether it be in your career, um, whether it be how you're performing in life or how you're showing up in that way. Um, to me, it was my success. Like, I just had this. I don't know who I thought I was going to be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think to me, that one thing was just the like, I just had a very like. I just had a very standard, normal life picked out for myself that was safe, right? And I was chosen out of survival mode and out of safety. And when I didn't become that and when I had to no choice but to walk in this, I was disappointed. Um, I was sad. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge journey. It's a huge journey. <laughs> That's so interesting. I want to back up just a little bit mm -hmm. to the accountability piece, just to give people some resources. Um, so when you're in these conversations, do you have any tips or tricks or tools for people to hold each other accountable, whether it's man or woman? Because I feel like it's just hard to be in that space, mm -hmm. like how to approach those conversations. Um, I think accountability starts with like being accountable to yourself first. You cannot hold anybody accountable if you're not holding yourself uh, accountable. And so I think that means like being accountable to how things make you feel and then explaining that and then giving people the choice to be accountable, right? Um, and letting them decide to show up in that or not. But I think a lot of accountability means being honest um, and naming like what the issue is, right? Like, for instance, um, I may do something and your natural response is to like, be like, yo, like, what are you doing? And like, expect me to be self-aware enough to like caught what bothered you, right? Whereas accountability is not necessarily reacting to it that way, but naming how you feel and being like, hey, like, that makes me feel sad when you do this. Like, here is how I need you to show up in those moments when that happens again. And then giving them the option to choose that or not. And then once they choose that or not, like, you then get to choose what you're going to do, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of it is just um, humility, right? Like, approaching every moment with humility and creating a culture of humility. I even do it with my friends. Like, I don't want to create a space where we always joking on each other. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be held accountable by always, be, like, I want to be a person that you feel safe with, no matter the circumstance. Um, but I also need that in those moments. Um, so being accountable, like just a tangible step is like just being being very honest and transparent and like bringing humility into the moments that um, that you really want to react. But also being accountable to like how you feel and, and setting that standard for how things need to go moving forward. Um, but then also not being upset if that other person decides not to like be held accountable, but you need to then be okay with being like, because what, what will happen is a lot of times is people will, and I do it myself, you'll hold somebody accountable, but because you like, don't keep that standard, like you kind of just like fall back into that situation like and now not only have you created someone to not be accountable but you've also created a habit that every time that they do something wrong like it's a way out of that mm -hmm. and so being accountable is also like setting that standard and then adhering to it 
And then if they don't follow it, you move on with your life. Um, it's that's a little so tough, real. But... <laughs> no, I, I think that's per- I'm like, I'm listening to him like, yeah, he's in therapy. <laughs> no, definitely in therapy. Like, heavy on the therapy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm telling my therapist, Malcolm is his name. He's in D.C. And um, I've come to the realization, like, yo, like your friends are your friends, your boys are your boys, like who you're dating is who you're dating, like your parents, like, like no, like you are accountable to yourself and making sure that you're good. Um, and you setting that standard around you, and and that's all you can worry about. <laughs> yeah, that is so real. Yeah. Well, you mentioned dating very, very briefly. Are you in a relationship? Or are you dating? No, no, no. I'm single. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if you know, but the streets are rough out here, and I'm, oh my God. I'm grateful to be in a relationship, but I just see so many horror stories of women dealing with, like, the craziest situations. And it's, it's not specific to Black men. It's, like, all kinds of men. So I'm just wondering if you have, um, I don't even know if advice is the right word, just, like, how are, or even how, how are you approaching, like, dating currently? So I'll start with what my dating life looks like and then like what my advice would be to people. I am still exploring what dating and uh, what that looks like to me and what dating without shame looks like. Who say more about that? So when it comes to like sex, or when it comes to like, I hope that's not too much for this podcast. Oh no, we get into it over oh, here. Oh, oh, okay, we love okay, pleasure. Cool. cool. Okay. Cool. 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 So like, when it comes to sex, right? Like, what it looks like um, in sexual fluidity, right? Like, I'm getting into all my business over here. What it looks like um, to uh, like what it looks like to explore my relations like with black women coming from a black mother. Right. And like some of the things that she fed to me and feeling like I could never be loved by black women. Right. Like it really just means like shedding off all of those things and, uh, and creating my own experiences and learning from those. Um, versus holding on to those past experiences and kind of letting those shape my world versus taking accountability for the fact that I get to shape my world moving forward. Um, and I no longer have to subscribe to like what I was taught or what I even, even with the, even what constructs like I built in my mind, Mm -hmm. right? Like, even to even on down to the point where feeling like I, I went through this phase where I feel like everyone I talk to, I gotta fall in. Like I'm I'm a lover boy. Yeah. Like, as soon as I meet you, like, and don't and don't let us like have sex. You know what I'm thankfully like I'm out of that phase in my life where I'm just kind of like, eh, like, eh, like I ain't, it ain't my body ain't even doing the same things that it used to do now that I'm grown. Like it, it, I really have to, uh, you know, have that connection now. Um, but it just looks like really like taking off all of the covers of everything and being like, you get to choose. Uh, and to the to my point of feeling like even practicing dating with non-attachment, like if it doesn't work out. Or like if we if we don't talk for like two days, right? I'm immediately being like, you don't like me, like you hate me, and I wish you, you know. And then, so I'm texting your phone, being like, do you want to talk or not? You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like that's how I am. Like no, same. <laughs> like, like, like you, um, do you like, not see you, me? Like <laughs> you should be on my line every day. <laughs> every day, every time of the day, I want to wake up to a text. I want to go to bed to a text. Like. That's, have you heard of love bombing? Do you know what love bombing is? That's me all the way. Well, I'm like, love bombing makes sense to me. I'm like, of course a man will be blowing me up and showering me with gifts and doing all that. Like, that's that. And I feel like that's Disney Channel or, you know, TV, just like messing us up. So when I learned that, like, that was a bad thing, I was like, oh, but that's what I want. <laughs> but that's a bad thing. And I was doing that too. I had, mm. I had, I was doing that. 
And what I was doing was, and I thought it was, I thought it was just me not being interested after a while. It's like, no, you going in getting what you needing and like exhausting that, like showing up as that for three months. And now you're, now you're tired and you want to move on. Like, yeah, that's unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> that's unhealthy, babe. <laughs> Unhealthy. And and even more importantly, it's like I had also had made a made a decision to not date black women. Now, I wasn't dating any women, like in oh, general. Let's get into that. Let's like, get into it. Because I felt like and I love black women. Um very much attracted to black women. Uh, but I felt like I needed to get my baggage in order first before I approached another one of them. You know what I mean? And mess up my own community of people, you know, like, and not to say that I'm interested in white women. I am not. not no disrespect um, to all my um, non-color sisters out there. Um, <laughs> no, no, no disrespect at all. Like, I love everybody. Um, but it was, it was, it didn't sit right with me to like not have my shit in order and like approach you on some like and then just 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 be ex- like even 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 on down to like hey yo like I'm not I'm not interested in anything even that's not acceptable to me because like you can tell somebody that all day but your actions are going to show completely opposite and so it's like also figuring out like what that looked like for me too like I when I tell you, when you said self-aware, I wish I wasn't like this, but I think of everything from like 10 different perspectives. I'm still going to probably choose the wrong thing, but I did think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's real. At least I thought about it. <laughs> that is funny. Um, okay. Because I, I feel like I see a lot of people say this, like Black women will be out, or really just any woman, but specifically the people I follow, they'll say like, oh, I was out and I saw like this dude looking at me but they won't come over and speak or and they'll dm later and be like hey i saw you out and so i'm like is it like a scared thing or is it like what is going on to where don't men don't to, don't that's not a man you want to talk to yeah like, well definitely not but i'm just like but it seems to be keep like keep happening and so i'm like what is going on with the culture of dating right now mm, i don't know <laughs> i i did realize though that that doesn't come later in life men are very sneaky so i was the type of guy where like i would be your friend for like a few um like I would, not for a few i would every woman that i've dated we were friends first and it then turned into us dating and so you I, say, are you saying you were sneaky with it at first like fake being their friend and then nah, nah, like, i was real, oh, okay. I was real. Okay. it was real and then like it eventually turned into like Oh, like we like each other. We spend a lot of time with each other, and then like you know, like after a few years, like that moment that happens, right? Um, but as I like got out into the dating world when I got older, um, and me being a me honing more into me being a man and realizing that I can go after what I want, like that's when it. Well, that's when I stopped being scared. You know, but that don't that don't come till later on in life. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm well into my thirties. I'm thirty two, and I just started this year being like, "Yo, it's it's really nice to meet you. What's your name? Like you're beautiful. Like I would like to see you again. Let me active like let me take some active steps to show that yeah. like, even if this won't be a long term thing, that you could feel safe with me as an experience." And as an individual, like that's what's missing the activation of it all. I think act- exactly. Yeah. So I really like even enjoy doing that. Where it's like wh- while there is no intention of like maybe me having a long term relationship, like we're grown and we want to flirt and we like might want to go out on a date every now and again or go grab some food if you know if 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 we if we want. But that also means like making sure that the experience is good for both people yeah for sure yeah it just seems rough out there so i was just curious it's definitely definitely rough out there like like do what you're supposed to do on your (laughs) like it's rough out there um but also like 
it is not rough if you know what you want and what you're going for. And it really be, it really be rough for the people that's not solid with themselves. That's like, very true. Um, and I think I'm very clear on like what I want and what I don't want right now and what I can and can't handle. And so it ain't really that hard for me. Like my DMs be good. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the DMs are open if I you're in Virginia. <laughs> I be open. I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna laugh with you, but like, you know what I mean. You know that's it, probably. Uh, but they open. I'm gonna talk and or do all the things uh, and flirt with you. But um, I also like will let you know that I'm. I don't need any more friends. <laughs> like, and that I'm not interested too. So. So how long did it take you to like get clear on what it is you were looking for? Did it, or did you have kind of already always know? I'm still getting clear. I know what I'm, I'm still uncovering that. And I think that that's okay. I just got okay with that actually, is that you don't have to have the blueprint already. Like you are the blueprint. And as young people, right? Like a lot of us aren't trying to be like our parents. We're trying to be a better version of them, right? Well, also like a lot of us didn't have a, a lot of guidance in a lot of ways. So we're trying to be this thing, not realizing where it's like, you don't know what you're trying to be. So like be thoughtful and intentional about how you like living. Like don't be afraid to make mistakes. Like take record as you will and adjust as you may. Um, and and go from, and, and go from there. Um, and so I, I say that to say like, I know what I want, but as I grow and like love on myself more, I'm finding out more of what I want mm-hmm. and I'm finding out more of what I need, not of just what I want, but what I need, like the husband that I want to be one day, like I'm not that right. And like who I want to be, like, like who I want to be with in my marriage, who I would want them to have I'm not him yet and I'm okay with saying that right like I'm okay with saying like it, it like it might adjust like I might I might adjust I might you know I, I say that to say like it changes every day yeah uh, and the more that I love myself and the more that I figure out like what I want the more that I'm able to figure out what I want from someone else if that makes sense that's so real yeah that's so much i did not expect us to talk about that at all so it was a nice little surprise um yeah, no like and i generally never really go into my like dating but you know i also like when you when you are really actively trying to do the work you don't mind like you don't mind sharing you know and so i'm glad you asked because now i can be like Yo, if you if you want to find out what's for real, for real going into my life, tune in here. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I think it's just good for women to hear like a male's perspectives on yeah. this. Um, if they, if they are dating, because I'm just like, just I just see so many horror stories. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. it can help. Like it has to be some good guy. I know there's good guys out there. It just seems it, like yeah, it's bad. but like also like. I always tell my, oh, I should say this story, but I'm going to say it. Um, like, my sister has, like, a really dope traditional guy. Um, Very normal. Does not come with a lot of the problems that a lot of the new guys come with. You know, if you yeah. get what I'm Like, a lot of us come with a lot of different type of problems that you got to sort through. You get what I'm saying? But he, she, he has, she has, like, a very traditional Southern guy. Um a very good hearted guy. But the downside about that is like, he is not a new age guy. And so a lot of the concepts and social structures and like ways of understanding, that's not really him. <laughs> you get yeah. what I'm saying? Whereas like, you might get that, you're going to get that with these new guys, these new age guys, but you also going to get that like baggage that come with it. So it's also kind of like, uh, like a pick your poison mm-hmm. type deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You what kind of life you want. <laughs> Choose yeah. your own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you want, it's, are they out here? They out here. But it is going to, like, with any individual that you choose, it's, it's 
it's going to be a journey and a very hard journey. Yeah. Me and, and my I, boyfriend, we just hit five years. And congratulations. Just, thank you. Yeah. Like, that's huge. It's been a lot of growing up together. And I feel like each year and really every day is just like a relearning mm-hmm. because can't. I think as soon as you're like, I know this person, then it's like, you're done. Because you really don't like, I think just being open to like letting whoever is there come through that day, I think has been like key because yeah. Yeah. whenever I like get into that mindset, I'm just like, I'm, I know I'm not on the right path <laughs> that day. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um you you said you just said letting whoever that is come through that day um i think that's good to like understand on our end as well too like whoever we need to be in that moment in that day giving ourselves permission to show up as that Mm -hmm. while our partner also understanding like you might get a different version tomorrow and like you just need to be okay with that like yes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah. like, but like, but but I need to be able to feel safe in all these versions, knowing that you're still going to choose me. Like, tomorrow. yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. And that's the only reason I'm with it because I I have a lot of personalities to me, and I feel like he just lets me be all of them. Um, like who you're gonna be for today? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm I, sure it's exciting for him. Maybe, maybe not. But. Right, right. Like, no, I, <laughs> I feel like I definitely see that from you where, where it's just like those of us that like are like smiling and generally like pretty easy going. There's always like this other alter ego. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> In my mind, like because I'm a Gemini this, I'm like, you're going to get eight different niggas. Like, mm-hmm. that's just what it is. Like, uh, but yeah, I get it. Okay. I do want to be respectful of your time. It's been so fun, like chatting with yeah. you. Yeah, um, same, same. All right, so I like to end each episode by asking, what is something that you're fostering for yourself currently? Safe space for the little boy in me to thrive and play safely. And to play is so it. important. Yeah, and to enjoy this world safely and authentically and to, and to love on people. I'm fostering like that space for him to thrive and for all the other young people inside of all of us to thrive. Oh, I love that so, so much. That's the perfect answer. <laughs> Thank you. Brendan, where can people find you? Plug and promote all the things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody, uh, you already know it's your boy, Brenton. Even if I ain't your boy, you know I'm still your boy. <laughs> your name on the thing says Big BZ. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that's also another one of my alter egos. Like, when I'm kind of going into, like, <laughs> fun, less serious spaces, I'm, like, always going to call myself that, right? Like, to, even to ease up the pressure, like, to not take myself too serious, right? Um, but you can find me on Instagram. It's Brenton Jamar. I tell people I'm a 10, not a ton. It's Brenton Jamar. Um uh, Yeah, you can find me that on all socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, my website. I also am a content consultant as well. And so I help creators and small business owners uh, create content um, and create strategies that ultimately speak to their audience and help them create the digital footprint that they need to make. Um, And yeah, if you... Well, if you're in the DMV area, you want to shoot, you need a website, you need any consultation um, on how to build your community or how to uh, create authentic content, like I'm your guy. So tap in, tap, tap, tap in. Definitely go check him out. He's a great follow. I am so obsessed with everything you're putting out yeah. and just everything that you're doing. I think it is so, so important and so needed right now. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. And thank you for having me, Angel. Thank you so much for even trusting what what people have said about me to be like, hey, like, because I know that I'm very uh, careful about who I'm in space with and creating and creating with and conversating with and like even like digesting what they're saying to me. So like, thank you for for seeing the vibe and the heart of who I am and what I'm trying to do like that always. Uh, makes me feel really special to be seen in that way too. So thank you. 
Yes. All right. I'm going to let you go. Have a good day. Thank you. You too, Angela. Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Brenton. I am like just blown away by the conversation we had. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend, a family member, a coworker. That would mean so, so much to me. And that is how the podcast grows. If you're listening on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe over there. If you're watching on Spotify, follow the pod so you never miss an episode. And yeah, and if you're on Apple, give us a rate and a review. I think I hit all the, <laughs> I think I hit it all. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this and I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. Bye.